Ah, oh, good morning, my friend. How are you doing right now? You know what, Mike? I'm doing okay, man. Happy to see your face, brother. Of course. And it's very much mutual. I mean, listen, we got a lot to get into. Uh, oh, yeah. So let, let's just tuck into it because, I mean, a whirlwind finale for you to say the least. I got to start with where things ended because you spoke about this a bit at the after show, but at least the way Final Tribal Council was coming across to us was very much Austin versus D and you just happened to be sitting on the same side as them. Was that realistic to how the Final Tribal Council went? You talked about sort of feeling you were drawing dead by the time things ended. Was that because there was so much time dedicated to them and not to you? No, I mean, it was kind of like, I, I think when Final Five didn't go my way, it's just like, I don't know what I really have. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't really feel like, I felt like even making fire would have been like, even had I won Final Four immunity, throw myself in a fire and win. Like, that's still like a really, really tough argument. So it's like, it's unfortunate, but like I kind of had the the expectation that it was not going to go my way before even going in. I mean, I tried my best. I make my best argument. Like I made an opening statement that was cut. Like I tried to say that, you know what? Boston Rob can't play from the bottom. Sandra Diaz Twine has never done well playing from the top. And I want you to judge our games on those merits. Me playing versus the bottom, then plays versus the top. It is apples and oranges, but I want, you know, you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. You know what I mean? So, I mean, the terms of the questioning, I mean, I feel like the jury, I, I was honestly going into final travel. I'm like, these guys are just going to beat the crap out of me. Like, mm. I'm going to do my best. But honestly, everyone was super respectful and really gave me a chance to talk about the things I did. And like, honestly, one of the first things that was said to me is like from Drew. And Drew was like, I mean, you saw it in the episodes. Jake, you're not giving yourself enough credit here. And I was like, it just meant so much because like Drew is – Drew's a really intelligent guy. He's very candid. You know what I mean? Even to the point of you know, people on Reddit giving him crap about it. But so when he said that, it really, like, it, and that was said really early in Final Trial, it's like, they're really respecting me as a person and giving me the ability. So, I, I I mean, they deserved all their questions about, like, they were back and forth and who totally controlled what. But I did feel like they gave me the the space to answer questions and and make a pitch. Which, now you talk appreciative of yeah well you talk about expectations and you spoke about as those votes were coming in you're like am i gonna be the laurel here yeah i thought I, dude i thought i was i was like whoa i thought i was voting well so let me just put that scenario in front of you put yourself back in that chair had it been a 4-4 vote do you know who you would have voted for between austin and d i i would i would have voted for d and here's why i i think that d like we said it like swap lulu like when we were all sitting down, everybody, Bruce, Kelly, Katora, Austin, sorry, not Austin, Caleb, um, really said like, hey, maybe merge a Tory, like, you know, get D, D looks like she's in charge. And it was kind of that way the whole way through from my perspective, being on the outside. It was just, she was so insulated. And I think when you do have your threat up for that long, um, and then you get to the end, I, I think, that that's super hard to overlook and that's not to take away from austin's game at all i think any any like critique of austin's game is not so much that austin played a bad game but i think d is just that dominant and it's hard to it, it'd be hard for anyone to beat d and then also like the thing about austin's position is that he had the two idols and the second one you know, he never needed to do anything to better his position, but it's almost like I maybe wish he found a way to like do something with it. But Austin's a great guy and he's friend I'll have for life. But yeah, I, I would have voted for D. It would have been tough, but I would have voted for her. So you and I talked in the preseason about how Tribal Council would be your stage. Uh, yeah. You have a panache for the theatrical. And let's talk about the reviews that came in because it's so interesting. There were a couple of moments like, of course, the infamous uh, two woe moment or even something <laughs> like turning and staring at Kendra Jeez. as she was being voted out. I mean, on the one hand, makes for fantastic television. Yeah. Like that is unquestionable. On the other hand, I could also imagine how maybe that might turn off the people that are sitting there alongside you. I mean, talk to me about that. I guess, first off, how much did you play up that theatricality at Tribal Council? And secondly, do you feel like it affected your perception? Um, I don't think like the theatricality affected the perception. I think that like those moments of trial, like the, whoa, sorry, whoa. I, I don't remember that at all. Like I mm. don't remember. I was shocked. I was thinking about what I was eating that night. I thought I was going home. 
Um, and like the Kendra thing, honestly, that's like a big regret of mine because I honestly was just disrespectful. The Kendra and Kelly vote happened like the day one right after the other. I felt like she was lying to me right before the Kelly vote. What she came up to me and she wasn't lying. Like she was trying to like get to do something. It never would have worked, but I thought she was, I thought she was babysitting me while I was looking for idols. And I'm just like, get out of my face, kid. And then the next day she's like, hey, it's all right. We're voting. I forget who she even said we were going to vote for, but it was like, people were telling me again that like, yeah, I can't just say your name. And it's like, you're lying to me two days in a row. And I just, I just felt hurt. But you know, when someone goes, that's it. You don't really have to, it, it's like one of like the regrets that I have is like, I didn't need to do that to Kendra. Me and Kendra are good. And like, honestly, as soon as everything was over and like the final travel ends, I, I like one of the first things I did was went up Kendra. That was completely uncalled for like too far. You know what I mean? Like it just didn't need to happen. Kendra's awesome, you know, in line's part of the game. And I was being a baby about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I want to also talk to that respect about, I had heard during the Kelly vote that, you know, you obviously thought that the spotlight was on you, especially after yeah. what happened with that Caleb vote. And I know that in talking with Kendra and talking with Kelly, like there were some tiffs that you were getting in as well. Was that an attempt to like draw votes on yourself to play the shot in the dark? Did that come naturally given just no. your like emotional journey? So literally I thought like, I thought Katora came over to me and I'm like, you're babysitting me. I know what this is. Like, please leave mm. me alone. And, no, we're not babysitting you. And I'm like, get, just get out of my face. Like, I know what this is. Like, at, we're let's not sit here and bullshit each other. But so I was upset about that. And then I felt like Kendra was doing the same thing, which she actually wasn't in that moment. Mm. Well, you talk about Katora. Obviously, let's get into the big play at five. So this is yet another big theatrical moment where you're like, okay, I'm going to, at least from our perspective, tell everyone I have the idol. They assume I'm going to play it on myself and I'm going to play it on Katora instead. How much of that was sort of a pre-cooked plan versus you deciding to just reveal the idol and then decide maybe afterwards, oh, actually I should play it on Katora now. Yeah. So I think if I like, so like, I think there's the critique out there that I should have tried to get all the votes on me. Mm. Right. Like, Jay, try to get all the votes on you and then play the idol. I don't think that shows a lot of control. I think that's very like, you know, oh, that's lucky you found an idol and then negated votes. But if I could use it to assert some control on how other people voted, I think it um, really squeezes the idol for more than more than the first situation would. Um, so in my mind, like it was kind of like, okay, like, should D or Julie go? Like, da, da, da. I was worried about like Julie and Faya, but like, and, like Katora's making great arguments. She's right. D needs to go. And um, my thought of playing the idol on Katora is that like I knew Austin would tell D. I knew that was coming, so I was like, okay, great. And like, I don't like as soon as Austin tells D, I told Katora that's votes that aren't coming my way. So that opens me up to do stuff with it. And in my mind, it's like, okay, like I know Austin wants Julie, and. I don't think D is going to end up voting for Julie. So then I thought votes may go on Katora. And here's the thing. So I play the idol for Katora. And in my mind, it's like that nerfs Katora a little bit. It makes like she like jumped up, gave me a hug. And I think that makes me look like in control in front of the jury. And then Austin is out of the loop on another vote and D goes home. So I think it would have been a much bigger squeeze than trying to put all the votes on me and just popping an idol. So Sorry, she, the question. No, no, it's great. I mean, she brings up the point and I will as well. Why did you choose not to tell her in the moment? Was it as simple as, as you mentioned in that final tribal council, like I wanted a natural reaction out of you? Were you to, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you were I doing that or, or, or if you were fearing that like she might bring the information back because certainly she's done that a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, it was possible, but it was, it was more for like, it was something that crossed my mind, but it was, it was more for the natural reaction. And I think had it worked out, I think that, is the I I think it's the correct move to you know not tell her based on the reaction like because I mean people from the jury like when that first vote came in for Katora they're like well it's Jake winning you know what I mean but you know yeah. that's just speculation from them but but um yeah I think I think that's the right move I think my mistake there was like I should have maybe came to the decision earlier in the day or whatever but yeah I I, I told her that I'd do it and I did it and she didn't talk to me about that fire making win because again as you mentioned like it's not necessarily a it's helping your win equity certainly but it felt like in that moment to me it was more so like this is for me you know yes. that you had experienced so many bad moments especially over the past couple of days that like 
you needed something to just tell yourself to shake away that imposter syndrome. Is that valid? I needed it so bad. I needed it so bad. Just like mentally, like those last couple of days were just like really rough because you just can feel like the game just like entirely slipping away from you. Like I was on the bottom and it's just to like watching a car crash in slow motion, doing all you can and just nothing's working out. It's just, I, I just for my psyche, I needed it. And like, I know fire making is not everyone's cup of tea, but I needed it so much. And I'm going to be forever grateful for that moment. It's one of the best moments in my life. And I, I needed it so much. I, I can't, words can't describe how much I needed that, like mentally. I mean, your entire last half of the game was predicated on these high highs and low lows. It would be yeah. things like going for this plan and then the plan failing, but then you're not, you're, you're uh, not voted out, but you're still kind of left out of it at the same time. Yeah. And you need to claim a move and hell, you get an advantage in the challenge and you leave behind the keys and you break the challenge. We saw from an emotional perspective just how tough it was. I don't think we've ever seen like an underdog story where it's so palpable just how depressing it can be to yeah. feel like you can't get your way. Talk to me about handling that while you're still also trying to play the game at the same time. That it's like you can't you can't stop. It's like it's kind of like, you know, I can't you, I can't get hung up on like losing a puzzle piece because it's like if I did, it's like, you can't try to do the next thing. It's, it's, I think there is a danger in Survivor about like letting those low moments become debilitating. And I'm very proud of like, I don't think I let, I mean, I did other things to debilitate myself, but I never let those lows, I think, stop me from trying to advance and making efforts to navigate successfully. Yeah. Well, you talk about, again, those low lows and we get this stuff in the pre-merge that I'm super intrigued to ask about given your your physical state. I mean, the first thing I want to ask from a more logistical perspective is like, is everything okay? Do you know what was happening out there? Was it just malnutrition? I think it was lack of food. Like I've never passed out before Survivor. I haven't passed out since. Um, yeah, I think it was lack of food. Like I, I passed out a total of three times. One was off camera, but um, yeah, no. So it, it was just honestly shocking to me. And I honestly thought I might get pulled. So I was just so scared. Like I just, I, I couldn't get pulled. Like it would just would have been a nightmare. I don't know yeah. how I would have come up with it. Like I was so scared I was getting pulled. Then well, when the downs, I like hurt my, hurt my ankle. I thought I might be getting pulled over that. I was like, oh, Jesus. Like, you know. Well, that segues though into like your frankly beautiful personal story about, you know, going through an eating disorder and sort of coming out the other side and your weight loss journey. I mean, talk to me about, how you felt about your story being told and subsequently how the fans have reacted to that, considering that I think you represent in many ways, a story that has not really been told on the show before. Yeah, it was, I, I was so, I was so happy with how the show handled it. Like they really handled it with such care and like, it was just such a raw moment and just like such like, you know, I think when you first go out on Survivor, you're like, oh, this is this is kind of weird. And it's just like in that moment, it's like, this is a hot thing. And it really felt like the moment for me, like mentally, it's like, okay, like you're here and let's let's make every second out of it worth it. Because, you know, I could have been gone. Like when's the first time? I think the first time I passed out was like on day six. Like every single second was like an absolute blessing to me. And I, I really feel like I took full advantage out of the experience and like every single moment I was there for. And I was like, I would wake up every day and like, you know, and you know, other people will tell you, I just like stop out of the blue and just be like, Oh my God, we're on survivor guys. What are we doing? You know? <laughs> oh my God. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know how much I love you, man. And I'm certainly not <laughs> alone. I mean, Jeff sort of prognosticated when he said people are going to love you. And even though, you know, you didn't win a million dollars. You've won at least a million fans, I think, from the fan reaction you've gotten for just being yourself out there, warts and all. Thanks, man. You know, I, I like came back. I don't need to be a great player. You know, I don't need to be viewed as some Boston Rob of Poverty Shallow. I just want people to know that I left everything out there. And I'm really proud of that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that came across.